I remember when Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor in 1933, the masses cheered. But we were not among them. We knew that the times would be bad now. We knew that the Nazi threats were not empty. That those people meant what they said. We had to do something. We couldn't just stay silent. But we also knew that it can cost us our heads. Hey guys, I'm Kirko. Welcome. Let's let us go together through the darkest of times. Through the darkest of times is a new game on Steam that is hitting Steam today, being uh, developed by Paint Bucket Games and published by Handy Games. And it's happening in Berlin in 1933 after Adolf Hitler just became Chancellor of Germany and it's on us to lead an underground resistance group and try to oppose him and his Nazi lackeys. So what can we do? We'll see. This game is played mostly to text and it uh, relies on your decision. There's always decisions to make and you know some of them can be good, some of them can be bad. You never know exactly what's happening and uh, we'll try to do our best to grow our resistance. So. I'm gonna start a new game. I played for like five minutes just to see how things work. And we're gonna go into resistance mode over here. Uh, we need to watch our every step. Police and Gestapo are on, are on high alert. The members of our group are always on the edge of leaving. We don't get to save games. There's no going back. Let's begin. Now, over here we choose who wants to be. So let's just randomize something. You can see they all have like different traits over here. Different uh, age and such. Teacher, Christian, liberal, teacher, Catholic, conservative, engineer, monarchist, cobbler, social democrat, packer, Catholic, conservative, artist, widow, wow, that's a profession. Hannah Peters, widow and a communist. Do you want to be a communist? Who knows? Waiter and a monarchist. Gerd Schroeder, locksmith, moderate, liberal. Okay. She's a singer. Unemployed anarchist. There we go. We can play as Rachel Titlebound. She's unemployed. You know, if she lived in 21st century, she would be a YouTuber or streamer. And she's an anarchist. Good. We can change her hairstyle a bit. Oh, I like this one. Her eyes. Uh, something like, like th light like this. Shape of her face. Let's go. Ooh. Let's go with something like this. Nose, sure, mouth, like that seems appropriate to her. We can't give her beard, unfortunately. Uh, accessory, oh, we can get some, uh, some glasses. Let's get, let's go without glasses. Clothing, oh, nice. Now, which one shall fit her best? It's a good question, it's important. That seems nice. Definitely not that one. Let's go... Something like this. Yes. Confirm. It is certain that today every honest German is ashamed of their government. Well, we are anarchists. We are unemployed. We are Ra Rachel Tatelbaum. Age 32. Chapter 1. The, the seizure of power. Stop the regime. Let's go, boys. Let us stop the regime. We are anarchists. Nice head there, buddy. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful head. On January 30th, 1933, President Paul von Hindelberg appointed Adolf Hitler to be Chancellor of Germany. That same night, still, three friends meet in the back room of a Berlin pub and commit to resist what is about to come. Everywhere in Germany, ordinary people, friends and families made the same commitment, risking their lives to help others and fight an inhumane regime. This is their story. Let us go then. Let us begin our story. Morale just dropped. Great. That's a good start. <laughs> Hitler is Chancellor. President Paul von Hindelberg appointed Adolf Hitler Chancellor of Germany. NSDAP celebrates. Liberals and left are devastated. Hitler swears oath to uphold German laws and constitution and to serve all German citizens. Centrum talks with Hitler. The conservative Centrum party has a number of questions on how the new chancellor plans to continue certain policies. By the election results, a new right-wing conservative government led by Hitler should see a number of Centrum ministers. So far, Hitler hasn't answered. 
S.A. Marshes. Tens of thousands organized stormtrooper S.A. Brown shirts marched through the Brandenburger Tor after Hitler's appointment. The paramilitary group was clearly prepared and awaited this moment. So this is us. We got Guido Baumann and Elizabeth Honigman joining us over here. Okay. When I enter our secret meeting place, I hear Guido Baumann say. They made him chancellor. Hitler, this, this is disaster. How could President Hindenburg appoint him? Well, we knew this would happen, so don't be surprised. We need to convince more people to support our cause before we draw any attention to ourselves. They're just waiting for a reason to have people like us arrested. Don't you think so, too? Guido asked me. Well, uh, sure, I think you're right. We need, we need supporters. See, says Guido. While we wait, the Nazi persecute and kill people. They get stronger every day that they aren't stopped. Elizabeth takes a sip for her drink. You know, I hear you, buddy. I hear you, Elizabeth, but we do have to be careful. You know? We can't fight if uh, you're dead in or in prison. So, what is the most important task right now, Elizabeth asks. Helping the persecuted, finding the truth and spreading the word, fighting the regime. Um, finding the truth, spreading the word, you know, more people hear about this, the more chances are more people are gonna join us. Let's do it. We know that the Nazis are, criminal, are criminals, but we can't prove it yet. We need to document and spread the truth, I say. End of scene. Good. So, we reached checkpoint. This is the news that we just read. And over here we plan missions. Got it. So, these are current three people that we have. This is our morale at 60. And we have five supporters. Would be nice if we had 20, I guess. So, we have three missions available over here in the city. Uh, this is our headquarters. And there's more missions out here that are still locked and we don't know what they are about. So let's see what we have. Talk to the workers. We need uh, skills. As you can see, they have uh, everybody has certain skills. So let's see. These, this is secrecy, how careful and conspirative a member is. Wow, Guido, you're crap at that. Propaganda, creating and distributing propaganda, convince others of our cause. That he's very good at. And the common knowledge of your literacy. So Guido is a teacher, Catholic conservative, and a plotter. Okay. You can see his skills. Propaganda and literacy for him are very good. Everything else is crap. Elizabeth Honingman is maid, monarchist, and eloquent. Interesting. So we have anarchist, monarchist, and Catholic conservative. Hmm. Uh, she is kind of secretive. She has generally solid stats. And we have... Uh, Solid propaganda and literacy as well, I guess. Okay, so for this we need uh, empathy and propaganda. Alright. For this one we need also empathy and propaganda for collection. And finding a new member we need secrecy and empathy. Alright, and we can, you know, we can bring more people. Let's, let's go find a new member. Uh, let's find a new member. We need to find candidates we can trust who are willing to join our group, but don't give away that we are recruiting for the resistance. So uh, we need somebody that has secrecy and empathy. And we can bring more people. So Elizabeth should be solid at this. But if we add, let's say, Rachel, so us, to this, we get better preparation scores. So better chance that we're going to succeed. Right? Um, there's a level 2 mission, apparently. Yeah, that's okay. We'll confirm this. We don't really need to bring anything with us right now. I don't think uh, Intel is going to help us or that bicycle is going to be useful. And uh, we can send Guido to talk to the workers. I think that would bring us more supporters or collect donations, which would uh, get us some money. Hitler is evil, enemy of the church. Okay. I can't believe that Hindenburg called him for counselor. Just hope he'll be gone again soon. Let's, let's have him go talk to the workers, maybe. Julius Herzog, a worker and supporter of the group, wants to introduce us to some of his co-workers. Okay. Guido. Yeah, he's solid at propaganda, so that should be useful. You can see what can be helpful over here. Being a worker, idealist, or inspiring is helpful. But being a academic, freelancer, or white color is not good. You are academic, so... Probably not good to put you here. How about you go uh, collect donations? Our supporters among the workers in Kreuzberg might be willing to help us out with some donations. Okay. So, it's harmful if he is con Catholic conservative, which I think he is. Damn it! <laughs> You're not useful to any of these. My dude. Uh, but sure. <laughs> we just want to... 
I just, I just want to send you somewhere. What if we send uh, her over here? Would it to help? You know, this is the first mission. I think it's fine. Just send him out there. And now we can end the planning. We'll see how it goes. So, we got two marks. Five people are still supporting us. Our supporters donated two marks. Okay. Let's see the missions. So, Guida Bauman meets with co-workers of our supporters in Kreuzberg and talks to them uh, to see if some would be willing to help us. Turns out there are still some people not happy about the regime and willing to do something about it. Good. So, we got five supporters and our morale went up. Not the worst. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth Honingman talks to dedicated supporters to find out if they would be willing to join our group. She finds three who she thinks might be able to become core members of her group. Now it's on us to decide which one should join our group. Alright, so we can pick one of the three. Emma Feldhahn, 40. Rosalind Beer. Oh, I like Rosalind Beer already. <laughs> and Julius Herzog. Okay. So we have teacher, Christian liberal. We have a file clerk, Catholic conservative. Okay. And we have an architect, Catholic conservative. Now, how are we on strength? You have three strength. We don't really have anyone that's good at strength. Maybe, you know, Rosalind, we pick her. She's also very secretive, so I kind of like that. Sure, Rosalind, like, you, you do have that amazing, uh, amazing uh, name, so can't say no. It's already dark as I ride home on my bike. The streets are empty and an ice cold wind sneaks its way through my scarf. Uh, I guess I burrow my face deeper into the, my scarf. Sure. I reach an empty Alexander Platz. In the distance, I can see a group of men ganging up on someone shouting at him. I guess we can head for the group. We're supposed to be helping people. There are three men, all wearing the brown shirts and swastika armband of the SA. They're surrounding a civilian. Oh, no. We can't, we can't, you know, if we turn around, we'll just be the same problem. We're gonna be the issue as everyone else. But if you get close, we might get hurt. I guess it's the risk we're gonna take. Dirty Jew yells the loudest one. He steps forward and pushes the man so hard that he falls to the ground. Uh, let's approach carefully. Hello, sir. He loses his hat and I see that he is wearing a kippah beneath it. That's it. Rudolf, show him. Cheers, another one. I'll, I guess, I'll keep a safe distance. I don't want to interfere because that could be dangerous. One of the brown shirts picks up the old man's hat and throws it behind him. It lands right on my feet. Get it, Jew? Get your hat, he shouts. The others laugh. Fine, I'll pick up the hat. I pick up the hat from the ground and the brown shirts turn towards me. You better put that hat back to where it was, says the man who threw it. The group slowly moves towards me, forgetting the old man for a moment. What do you want, demands Rudolf. Mind your own business. Piss off. I'm not gonna attack them. What is wrong with you? Uh, I'm not gonna threaten them. There's like three of them. Let's see if we can calm them down. Come on, guys, no reason to get so upset. Shouldn't you be celebrating? Why all this violence? While I talk to the group, the old man quietly gets up and moves away. Ah, cool, let's uh, continue talking. You won, didn't you? Your journey is going to be great again. The guy they called Rudolf steps closer, both hands on his belt. I can smell his bad breath. You, the thug says. You better bugger off right now, or you will seriously regret it. It's a new day. You people can't oppress us any longer. Uh, sure, I'm gonna be uh, agreeable. Sure, yeah, you think what you want. Shouldn't you be happy now that your fear has taken over? I say, while we're talking, I see the old man moving further and further away. Rudolph, says the third essay thug, who had remained silent so far. I think the Jew is gone. Uh, run to my bike. I take advantage of the opportunity and jump on my bike. Stop, shouts Rudolph. Stop, you will pay for this. <laughs> Let's laugh at them, sure. I just laugh and pedal as fast as I can. I only slow down when I can't hear their angry voices anymore. Yes, we helped the old man. Nice. I guess I have to get used to these things happening. Sure. End of scene. Let's go. Okay, so weekly decline of morale, minus 10. Great. For missions, we got 7. So we are minus 3 on morale. Awesome. And we got 5 supporters. So I guess that's okay. Parliament dissolved. At Hitler's wish, Hindenburg dissolved Parliament. All members of the House lose their seats. The Chancellor forms a preliminary interim government before new elections. So-called emergency decrees massively limit freedom of assembly and speech. Hitler's new expan newly expanded power can be used to shut down protests and, protests and quash any critical press. Hitler speaks with generals. Hitler speaks with high-ranking military officers discussing the need to rebuild the army and expand to the east. Oh boy. Oh right, we have uh, we have our new lady over here. So uh, Elizabeth is saying something. 
In the middle of our meeting, Elizabeth Honigman addresses the group. Everyone, there's a public protest against the Nazis coming up. I guess that's a good chance. Elizabeth continues. We can spread the word. We can recruit others. People willing to protest are exactly the people we need. You're right. Okay, let's do this, I say. Easy. All right. Join public protest. A variety of groups have announced public uh, protest stuff. Okay. Play mission. Yes, supporters. We need supporters. We have 10 right now. Is this 10 out of 20? I'm not quite sure. And we have 62 morale. So that's not the worst. Not the worst. Okay. So we have two new missions. Buy paper. I don't know why that would be useful. I guess we get get to print stuff. Yeah, produce leaflets manually. Ah, there you go. Cool. And we need paper for that, I guess. Join public protest. We need three members to go here. Okay. Sure. Empathy and... Uh, uh, okay, so we need somebody that's very good at literacy and has some empathy. Maybe we'll send Guido over here. Although Guido would be great here joining the public protest because he can speak. He can speak and he can sing. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's send Rosalinda Beer to go buy us some paper. Ooh, she's not very good at this. Huh. Maybe not. It's helpful if you have a negotiator. She has a doubtful pla uh, past. Oh boy. I don't know if anybody... Oh, well, she would be better at this. Everybody would be better but her. So, fine. We'll, s we'll send my characters over here. I'm gonna get her a bicycle. So we can uh, run away if need be. Confirm. And let's send... Uh, let's join the public protest. Our supporters, Henrik Mendelssohn, lets us know that the Social Democratic Party is going to hold a huge public protest against the Hitler and the Nazis in Tiergarten. Alright, well... Everybody go there. I think Guido should do good because his propaganda is really solid. So we get 7 to 11 new supporters. Potentially. Good. Uh, can we get intel? It makes it more dangerous if you take intel with us. So probably not. Marks? Doesn't do anything for us. Okay. Fine. Confirm. Let's see what happens. Yes. Let's see what we have. Ooh. As I'm about to enter my apartment, Mrs. Meyer, the neighbor who lives in the apartment beneath me, gets in my way. Uh, I'm gonna greet her. Good evening, Mrs. Meyer, I say. You, she says and points her finger at me. Uh, it won't be long before you get what you deserve. Uh, what have I ever done to you? You, all the trampling over my head. All the noise. Don't play innocent, but it's over now. It will all be over soon. Have I been too loud? Was I too loud? So I'm sorry, I say. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I have taken measures. I won't accept this any longer. I really don't understand. Please explain. Listen, I sent a letter to the landlord and asked him to kick you out. I'm sure he will. No good German wants someone like you in their building. You can move out voluntarily or you can wait for him to kick you out. If I were you, I'd get out right away. Why? Why are you doing this? Jew, she yells, her voice cracking. You are a bloody Jew. Get out of my hi house. Oh, great. I have heard enough and push her out of my way. This is mine. I have been neighbors for years without any problems. What is happening to people? This has to stop. End of scene. Wow, that's horrible. We got three marks from our supporters. Good. Let's see the missions. So I want to buy papers. Rachel Tatelbaum wants to buy paper. To avoid being tracked, she picks a shop in Kreuzberg where no one knows her. The clerk takes the order and disappears in the back while Rachel Tatelbaum waits at the counter. After some time, the clerk returns with paper. We got two papers for like 20 marks. I don't know if that's really good. No idea. We joined the 200,000 protesters who are gathering at the Berlin in at the gathered at the in the Berlin Dusgarten Park to protest. Okay. The speaker asked the crowd for discipline and unity in resisting the Nazis. Do not worry, there are too many of us. Hitler and his henchmen can't stop us, he says. We talked to other protesters and some are willing to support us in the future. Nice, we got nine people. Nine supporters. Good. Uh Oh, we got plus seven morale. That's good. And extra nine supporters. 
Let's read the news. New right-wing coalition. The right-wing parties DNVP and Stahlheim established the Kampfront Schwarz-Weiß Rot. They will participate in the March election and build a coalition with the Nazis. Uh, Kowitz steps down. Heinrich Mann and Kate Kowitz step down from their position within the Prussian Academy of Arts under pressure from the Nazis. Adolf Hitler uh, opens the NSDAP election campaign with a speech in the Berlin Sportspalast. Sportspalast. Okay. Uh, that's the news. Nothing over here new. Okay. There's still four of us. Group morale. This is the morale of your group. Yeah, keep an eye on it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so if we read zero, then it's end of the game. Okay. Cool. Now, uh, we can't buy papers because we don't have money. We can't print this because we don't have three papers. Uh, finding a new member, we don't have the money. But we have a new mission over here, meet a friend. Okay, this is going to get us more supporters. I would love to do that. So we get to meet a friend, collect donations. I think we should go collect donations because we need money right now. Helpful if you're communist or anarchist. We're already anarchist, so... Hell yeah, ooh, that's that's really good. Okay, I think she's enough to just go on this on her own. Yeah, she's got this. Collect donations. Uh, let's go meet a friend. Meet a friend in uh, Lichtenberg to find if he'd be willing to help us. So, communist, anarchist again, social democrat, idealist, or inspiring. Harmful if you have Catholics. These guys are both... No, you're Catholic. Yeah, these two are Catholics, so... She could do it? No, they hate a monarchist. Crap. But what if we send more people, so we get more <laughs> negatives right there? We could send three people over here. Hmm. Well, what if we send you? Uh, right, I did already assign you there. What if I send you? I would like to go meet a friend, you know? Let's do that, and then we can send... Oh, Jesus, we just have the worst people. There you go, okay, you guys... Uh, he has good propaganda. Yeah. So let's send him here. Can we do this one as well? Talk to workers. Uh, it's kind of bad. Because we get a white collar from you. No, from her. Okay, if he send just you. Yeah, it's just... Oh, you're white color as well. Fire clerk and maid. Correct. Let's go back here. We're just gonna add you over here. There we go. We can succeed easily over here. And we're just not gonna send Elizabeth anywhere. Fine, let's go. Okay, our supporters. We lost a supporter. She am. And we got five marks from them who are still supporting us, okay? Guido Baumann was the group known supporters among workers in Kreuzberg to ask for additional donations. He's successful. People are upset about the latest atrocities of the regime uh, and are willing to help the group. So we got two morale and 20 marks. Nice, 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 nice. Mm -hmm. And Rachel Tatelbaum meets in Lichtenberg with friend from the old days to ascertain how he thinks about the regime. Turns out her friend opposes the regime even more than back then. When Rachel Tatelbaum explains him what this is about, he wants to help right away. So we got another supporter. Good. We lost a supporter, we gained one. We lost six morale. Crap. Okay. Hitler meets industry leaders. Hitler meets with uh, captains of the German industry and secures campaign donations for the upcoming elections. Tyson Krupp and a number of high-ranking German business leaders agree to support the NSDAP and the NVP. SA and SS form new police force. Reichsmarschall Goering appoints 50,000 SA and SS members as special constables and urges them to enforce the law with prejudice. Oskar Maria Graf leaves Germany. The famous writer Oskar Maria Graf goes on a lecture tour to Austria and decides he won't return to Germany. Smart. Okay, Guido and Elisabeth are talking. Elisabeth Honigman tells me that she despises Guido Baumann. Wow! Great! Thanks! He's a Catholic conservative. His views don't do the group any good. He would be much better off without him. We have two Catholic conservatives, okay? I'm not asking Guido to lead because, uh, leave because he's great at propaganda. Both should stay. 
I explained to Elizabeth that we are a group with different views and opinions, but we are united in the fight against the regime and that she needs to live with that or leave the group. She doesn't seem too happy with my decision, but doesn't bring it up again. Guido seems relieved. Oh, that's, that's good. So, you guys lost minus five of what? Maybe how much they like me? I don't know. Can we talk to Rosaline? No. Okay, let's plan missions. Uh, that's new, but we need paint, it seems. Write slogans on the walls. Medium, huh? Mm. And we need strength for it. Uh, we should go get these papers. And finding a new member is very important, I think. Yes, secrecy and empathy. Uh, let's see. She could be useful. Inspiring and leader. I don't know if we have anybody that's that. I think she should definitely go over here. But... Uh, why, why did we just get double extra 20 marks? Huh. Let's put her there. Uh, let's go papers. Yeah, there's the, there's the money. Uh, so... Two, three... Two, three, one, four. Hmm. If I send you... It's helpful if you have a negotiator. We don't really have one. I can send you all and get three to five papers. That would be useful. If you get four, we can do the printing twice. Confirm. Let's go. Onwards. Get me papers. Okay, we lost on our supporter again, but we got some money. So that's good. Guido Bauman wants to buy paper to avoid being tracked. He picks the shops in Kreuzberg. We've seen this before. We got four. Hey, there you go. Two morale, four papers. Uh, they've all been seen. Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> they've been seen buying paper. Resident Beard talks to dedicated supporters. Found out they're willing to join. Okay, there's three. And we got five morale. Okay, who do we grab? Another Catholic uh, conservative. I guess we were buying Catholic conservatives. These guys have been seen. He shows how much the authorities know about this member. Oh boy. So we could really build a Catholic conservative party. I don't know how good that is in the long run. Since we have an anarchist and a monarchist. So she's an actress. She's a freelancer, constantly on the lookout for the next contract, okay. Catholic conservative, which doesn't seem to be that useful. But hey, you know, since we since we are grabbing Catholic conservatives, <laughs> let's get a third one. We're gonna have a proper party going on soon. Oh boy, party! It's loud. It's late and I'm having a drink at the bar at uh, Hex Hexer Mark when a man storms through the door, yelling, "The Reichstag is burning! The communists have burned down the Reichstag!" I'm gonna run outside. I leave my drink and run outside as fast as I can. Despite the late hour, the streets are full of people. A red glow illuminates the night sky above the Reichstag. Uh, I will wonder what happened. What are we are still doing here? Says a woman in a fur coat. Let's go there and find out what happened. Okay. I will join the group. It should be safer. I join the group and together we walk down the empty streets all the way to the Reichstag. The closer we get, the more intense the small smoke and fire gets. Soon it becomes hard to breathe. I shall pull my scarf again. When we reach the bridge that leads to the Reichstag, we are stopped by police patrol. Area closed, says the officer. Leave. Uh, I shall look at the crowds. On the other side of the bridge, the Reichstag is ablaze. On our side, more and more curious onlookers gather. So, I can speak to the woman. Talk to a big man, approach a man wearing a great war uniform. Ooh. Uh, that could be interesting. But let's speak to the woman in fur, because she was the one uh, telling us to come closer. Speak to a woman in fur coat. I recognize her as the one who led the group from the bar. Who do you think did it? She asked me as I approach her. Um, I'm gonna say that's what I wanted to ask you. So I wanted to ask you the same thing, I say. How the hell should I know? She shrugs. All I can tell you is that things have become very unpleasant ever since that aggressive little clown took over. And this, she points to the fire, this looks like his style. But you didn't hear that from me, alright? Of course. Sure enough, good, she smiles. People like me are in enough trouble already. People like you. You seem alright, she says, Ignore my question. If you ever feel like dancing to the music our new ruler despise, come by. She hands me a card that says Giraffe Dance Bar Cabaret and disappears in the crowd. More firefighters arrive. They must have come from all over the Berlin. 
Nice. Okay, so we have a new contact. Let's approach the man wearing the Great War uniform. Approach the man wearing the Great War uniform that has seen better days. He turns around and stares at me. What do you want? He says sharply. Who started the fire? The communists did. And the Jews, same thing, really. He raises his voice. But this will be their death sentence. This is the last time they attack the German people. Hitler will show no mercy. They are already... They are done. Done. Yeah, I've heard enough. <clears throat> uh, police is getting aggressive. Uh, let's talk to the big man, sure. Who? Big man. Talk to a big man with a flat cap and knows that he's just a flat, as flat. He looks like a professional boxer, one who has lost at least as many fights as he has won. So I begin. Who do you think did this? Are you asking me, the guy asked, surprised? It was me, I tell you that. Calm down. I didn't say it was you, probably, but someone did. It's your theory. The boxer comes in close, lowers his voice and says, The Nazis did it. Obviously. They will use this to take everyone out. You'll see. He looks left and right and leaves. The police is now aggressively pushing by the crowd. Okay, so that guy could join us. He seems like a guy who would be strong. It's very late, and when I finally arrive home, I fall asleep right away and dream of fire and the strange people contradicting each other about who started it. I sleep. Uh, you know what? No, time to get up. We have work to do. We have work to do. Still sitting in bed, I hear noise. Open the door. Open it, or we'll kick it in. Someone is hammering a department door. Um, I shall hide. The door opens with a loud uh, crash and two policemen and SA men enter the apartment. Stop, shouts the brown shirt. Are you Rachel Teitelbaum? asked uh, the police. Yeah, I, I guess I'll have to admit that it's me. I don't think lying makes sense at this point. Yes, that's my name. What do you want? You'll learn that soon enough, communist swine, is the SA man. You're under arrest, says the police officer. If you're innocent, you have nothing to fear. Give the SA man a look, because that's still how it works. I haven't done anything. I'm innocent, and you have no right. I begin when the SMA hits me in the face. Innocent, he yells. You're not innocent. You are a communist, a traitor to the German people. Today is Judgment Day. Uh, I shall look at the ground. No beating during arrest, shouts the policeman at his, at his brown shirt helper. You will wait in the car. Is that clear? Then he looks at me and says, Frau Teitelbaum, I need you to follow me. Everything will be cleared up at the police station. <sighs> okay. I follow the officers, accompanied by brown shirt, waiting in the stairwell. Well, I wonder what's going to happen now. Richard Tatelbaum has been arrested. The morale of the group decreases to 60. Okay, just minus 5. Sure. They come in the middle of the night and throw me into... They came, I guess, into the back of a truck with our prisoners. We are being driven through the city and arrive at the building guarded by men in the black uniforms of the SS. Down there, Burks, one of the SS men holding a rifle. He points us towards the building. I'll follow his orders, I'm not gonna be uh, a smart mouth. Follow his orders and they bring me into a dark windows, windowless room. They tie me to the chair, the only thing I can see is a bright bulb sh shining into my face, making my eyes water, my wrists hurt from the restraints. I'm gonna uh, keep quiet, yeah, sit there and wait. After what feels like ages, someone enters the room and takes a seat at the other side of the table. I will I will greet him, sure, hello I ask. Millboy speaks. No, Miss Tattlebaum. Will you speak voluntarily, or do I have to force it out of you? Um, who are you? You have no right to hold me here. This is not a police station. You are not the police, are you? Oh, that's fine. I do prefer to use a force, but if it's your decision, he answers. Uh, I shall cooperate, sure. I'm happy to help, I say. Just tell me what you want to know. I have to give them something. So I ask my interrogator. So, what is it you want to know? Where does your group meet, he asks. What do you mean? Meetings group? I have no idea what you're talking about, I say. As you wish, the interrogator comes closer. The light is too bright for me to see his face, but I can see him raise his fist. Uh, I will turn away, sure. Turn, I try to turn away, but it doesn't help. He hits me above the eye. I feel dizzying pain and blood runs down my face. He beats me for what feels like hours and continues even after I lose consciousness. Eventually, they bring me to a cell. It is tiny and cold and smells like feces. There's no mattress or plank bed, so I lie down on the ground. At least no one is yelling at me or hitting me right now. Let's go to rest. After a week of interrogations and abuse, they let me go without explanation. I can't believe my luck and think. Now more than ever, we shall resist. End of scene. Wow, that was... That was crazy. Uh, we lost the person. We lost morale. Great. <laughs> she got arrested really fast. 
Okay, and as the AP wins parliamentary election, Reichstag general election of Mar 5th of March 1933 takes place, and as the AP gets 43% of the votes, the Nazi DNVP coalition enjoys a slim majority, just enough to conduct the ordinary business of government. The state election in Prussia takes place and the same day pr uh, produces a similar result. Uh, SN police search apartments and meeting place of communists throughout the city, confiscating publications and arresting hundreds, among them some members of the Reichstag. To commemorate the historic election victory, the Ministry of Education decides that all schools and universities will remain closed this Wednesday. Good stuff. Well, she doesn't. Uh, it doesn't show like she's got beaten, so that's good. Uh, Elizabeth Huntingman pulls me aside. Look, it's my brother. I never dreamed things would go this far, but trust me, it's okay. You can tell me. Elizabeth sighs. Look down at the ground and back up to me. Last night he came home in a brown shirt uniform. Oh, you are in danger or you are a danger. You know what? I'm gonna say you are in danger. I'm uh, an emphatic moon or woman or something like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. If he finds out you're with us, you can end up in a prison or worse. Hell, all of us could. Shh, they don't need to know, says Elizabeth, looking at the others. Listen, I know my brother trusts me. This could be a huge opportunity for us. I could get valuable inside information. Oh, yes, 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 definitely. You will be our informant. Alright then, let's do this. See if you can get us any valuable information, but please, be careful. Good. Good. We got Paula Mendelssohn as well joining us, so we have five people now. Perfect. Uh, why is this a reddish? Is that because they are here? That could be it, you know? We might be cracking open. So, ooh, yeah. All of this is much higher. Donations would be low. This is extreme risk. This is extreme risk. <laughs> this is high, but it would be a good thing to do. Print, uh, printer Crystal Friedrich stole a printing roll from her workplace and made it to us. We can now create leaflets manually. Oh, this would be dangerous. So a teacher, academic and eloquent would be helpful. I can't go, I, my heat is too high. She is eloquent and he was a teacher so this should be yeah preparation is good we have stacks of paper danger high i wonder if he brings somebody that's good at fighting stuff with good strength would that reduce it no okay uh grab a bicycle oh, not in there there you go that reduces the danger a bit so we'll see we'll see if they can do it preparation is good it's just danger is pretty high and they both have a uh, heat level so you know that would uh, be problematic uh, gra grabbing donations would help they're all Catholic so that doesn't help at all but it should be fine it's also pretty dangerous Intel just ah, oh, Intel would help over here but uh, you might get more marks but it makes it dangerous you know what screw it let's do it Confirm. She's gonna stay home because her heat is too high. Alright, let's do this. End the planning. We lost one uh, person and we got five marks. Let's see if you succeed. Elizabeth Honigman is writing and manually printing leaflets all night long. It is hard physical work and while she's trying her best, she's only producing a small amount. But we got four and we got morale and we still have the bicycle. So nothing terrible happened. How about here? Resident Beer visits the group's known supporters in Kreuzberg. Yes, yes, yes. We got... Ooh, 27. That's really nice. And we got a achievement unlock. Collector. It been seen. Yeah, well. Weekly design. Minus one. Minus six morale. We got the money, though. No. <laughs> so there's that. Joseph Goebbels uh, founds the Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda. Using the powers of new Reichstag fire decree, the Nazis remove Communist Party members from the seats they won in the election. Uh, Bremer Volkszeitung, Volkszeitung and Schwabische Tagwacht are the last SPD newspapers that closed down due to being banned. Great. They're banning newspapers. At our meeting, Elizabeth Hunnam is seething. I swear to you, the fire at the Reichstag was the biggest gift the Nazis could have hoped for. What do you mean? They're blaming the Communist Party, whom they've been enemies with forever. And now they have the excuse they need to just round them all up, including my own father. Can you help? Is there anything we can do? I need a lawyer for my father in prison, but that costs money. Don't give her money. All right. <laughs> we can't spare any money right now, I tell her. I guess we just didn't have enough or something like that. <coughs> oh, great. Morale goes down. She's not happy. 
I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna lose pretty fast. So we have leaflets. The truth will set them free. If you could display a slogan in the highest warehouse of Alexander Plants while spraying critical leaflets, maybe people could learn what is really going on in Hitler's Reich. We are missing a critical leaflet. What kind of leaflets do we have then? Because we have them. We have a stack of leaflets. There's four of them. I guess there are no, those, those are not the same. You know. Because we can't do any of these missions. But we have a new one over here. Dancing at the giraffe. Yes, we definitely should go there. Okay, so if you don't go on a mission, your heat uh, goes down. Okay. Makes sense. Let's go check this one out. Recre uh, recreational missions. Recreational missions gain back a lot of group morale at once. Starting one, starting one means all members will stop what they were doing and join the recreational event. Okay, cool. Let's go dance. Yes. Woman in a fur coat whom I met the night the Reichstag burned down gave me the address of a nightclub in East Berlin. If you ever feel like dancing to un-German music, come and visit us. Yes, all members will abort the current mission to, to join us event. This is good. Hopefully the heat will die down a bit. And uh, it's going to cost us some money, but it's going to give us huge morale boost. That's that's actually great. Yes. Let's go. Hitler, Satan. I am sure the Holy Father in Rome will see this. Yeah, we have too many uh, Catholics, for sure. Okay. We lost another supporter. Uh, but I gained five marks from those still supporting us. So that's okay. Good stuff. We travel to the east of Berlin and visit a nightclub that was recommended to me by the woman in the fur coat who I met during the night on the right stuff burned down. I recognize her, the woman with the fur coat at the entrance. Oh, it's you, she says. Come on in. This place is still a remnant of what Berlin used to be. Let's dance. We dance all night like there is no tomorrow and have a wonderful time. When we finally leave, the day is already dawning. This felt good. We need this back. Yes, I agree. More partying. This is a nightclub. Recommended. Yes, yes, yes. We dance and this felt good. So we got 50 morale, which is crazy good. <laughs> we got 50 morale, but we lost a supporter. So, it's okay. Uh, ceremony of the opening of the new Reichstag was held in the Church of Potsdam and broadcast in its entirety on radio. The festivities began with religious services and the evening celebration ended with torchlight parade and a performance of Wagner at the Berlin State Opera with Hitler in attendance. As a trade war between Czechoslovakia and Germany is looming, Berlin shuts down all payments and travel between the two nations. The Nazis open a place in Dachau to retain dissidents, calling it a concentration camp. Oh, great. Just before the meeting, Elizabeth Honigman takes me aside and tells me she believes Guido Baumann is working with the Gestapo and is snitching on the group. What do you have against Guido? Uh, I'm gonna go talk to Guido. Ask Guido if there's anything he wants to tell me. He looks surprised and said he has no idea what I'm talking about. No wiser, still need to make a decision. I'm gonna keep him. I'm gonna keep Guido. If he's working with the Gestapo, well... It's a problem. Well, let's calm Elizabeth down for now. Don't want this kind of tension in the group. Yeah, calm down. She didn't get on. She did not get unhappy this time around. Okay. <clears throat> okay, our heat did not die down. But our morale is high. Low. Over there. Okay. We should definitely go produce some leaflets. Get more leaflets. So, he's a teacher. Yeah, he can go there alone. We give him a bicycle. He can run out there easily. If we bring, uh, was it no uh, Elizabeth? We might even get more leaflets. Without her, it's two three. With her, it's three to four. Go. And uh, let's see if we can get some supporters because we have sixteen right now. Yes. Um, I don't want to send her, even though she's the best at this. Uh, she can't go. Actress also can't go. Okay, so both of these are not very useful over here because of that. Hmm. Sure, let's send her, but the danger is high because of uh, her heat. Ooh, boy. That's really high danger. You know what? I won those, but let's, let's have the heat die down. Let's go print some papers. Or uh, do something like that. 
Can I send somebody over here to get something here? Helpful if you have a negotiator, which you don't. Let's send you to and uh, let's buy us some of that paper. Okay. Paper, please. Uh, we lost again a supporter. Yeah, we really need more. We got four marks this time around. Let's see what happens here. They go buy paper, sure. Uh, Paula thinks she has been seen. Yeah, we got three papers and two more out. Uh, they're uh, writing. Elizabeth has been seen. Okay. Fair enough. Morale goes up and we got more leaflets. Morale went down. All right. Enabling Act grants Hitler legislative powers. The new parliament passes the Enabling Act despite the objections of the Social Democrats. The Act allows Hitler to create new laws and even change the constitution without parliamentary uh, something. Something that I can't see. Hitler rejects the accusations of in foreign pa newspapers. There is no danger to Jews in Germany. Fake news! Goebbels announces a political purge of public broadcasting and media. Starting April the 1st, the German radio station will broadcast an hour of the nation daily from 7pm to 8pm. Good stuff. They fired me. I lost my job, says Elizabeth. I'm so sorry. Sorry. I think someone overheard me speaking with a colleague about voting for the Communist Party in the last elections. Elizabeth says, this is horrible. I don't even know where to find the money for rent next week. Or food. Uh, I guess we can give you a couple of marks. We'll give you some money until we find something new. Ten marks. Sure. Afraid that's all we can give you right now. Say, any her ten marks. All right. Morale wins down. And her stuff went down. Okay, we have reached a checkpoint. I think this is gonna be the time to finish the episode. I hope you like what you see. We're going through the dark times, and it's it's tough. I gotta I gotta admit it's tough. But uh, I hope you like this. I hope you like this style of a game. And uh, you should go check it out on Steam. It's an indie game, and you know we should all support indie developers who make unique games like this that actually means something you know they have historical value because they i don't know try to recreate the really dark tough times that happened well almost a century ago now but we must not forget about those times because yeah kind of half of the world not half but pretty much the whole world suffered in one way or another in any case for now thank you everybody for watching i do hope you enjoyed this episode click the notification bell below if you want to see more from me and i'll see you guys next time. Also, tell me if you'd like to see more episodes of Through the Dark Times.